You can't touch this. You can't touch this. All right, stop. My, 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 my hammer hit you so hard. What is up, YouTube? It's Kingfisher745. And in this video, we're going to take a look at Skurn and Nurkod. So that's why it's hammer time. Now, if it would have been Beta Ray Bill and Thor, it'd be Hammer Bros instead. But that's one for a later date. Trust me though, this team is going to be pretty epic. And just before we get started, I do want to say a special shout out and thank you goes to Agent Seraph1. So let's hear it for him. Now for our first match, we're taking on Kurth, another Hammer Time candidate, and Iron Fist. Definitely a solid pair of characters, but luckily Nurkod gets to begin, and we'll use her level 1. Since we're using Tactician Power, she'll get another turn to follow, and with that we'll use Call the Seas. Now since she's set up and the enemies are drowning, we'll really be able to take advantage of her abilities. Plus, there goes Ace Attorney Skurn once again objecting. It's always great when that happens. With my agent, we'll exhaust the enemies with a fire tornado. And then after that, we could use our hammer. Which most certainly puts us in the hammer time category. I mean, it's got rune writing and everything. But it also has molten blood. Which against certain team ups and certain items, can really come in handy. It says fire and energy attacks will heal instead of harming. Right away, custom only for killing is used, and there you see it heals us instead of hurts us. So honestly, I couldn't have scripted that. Now the problem that we run into, actually with Skurn, is she has many unarmed attacks. Because of that, we should save our bursts of speed, and just use motion granite. That is of course because the enemy bruiser agent protects and they have the watchful eye. So that's something we've learned and we're going to put into practice in future fights. Next up Kurt's going to use Stonebreaker on our agent and although this will trigger absorb energy, it also explodes a rune. Quite honestly we're very lucky that that move didn't kill us. The rune explosion is terribly overpowered. But to celebrate our agent living, we'll go ahead and knock out their agent. And as a reward, we'll gain tactical insight and an extra turn. So with that, we'll use Breaching Strike, followed by our level 9 on Iron Fist. One other thing though, since we are a blaster at this point, we can use Primed and Ready. And that's just one cool thing about Nurkod and her class changing powers. So following this, since we've seen Iron Fist has no debuffs, we're going to go ahead and use Preserver, and that grants us rebuff. Our beneficial stats effects now cannot be removed, so that's actually pretty awesome. By the way, it's because of that that I really like using her with Iron Fist, as well as something like the Neurotrope. Then this time on our Agent's turn, we're going all out heals, first the Warm Zephyr, then the Light Fantastic. Following that, we can either try to use Stomp, or once again go with the Hammering Blow. In this case, we went with the Setup move because next round, she's going to gain Bursts of Speed, and she should be able to easily drop someone with her Stomp. Speaking of Knockout abilities, there goes a Crashing Fury which takes Kurt down. And at this point, Iron Fist makes a huge mistake. He attacks our Nerk God which is going to trigger Tactical Insight, besides a ton of Thorns and Hemorrhage damage. So with her E-ISO, her Tactical Insight is going to guaranteed give us an extra turn. And with that, she'll actually get another Knockout Blow with her Crashing Fury. Not a huge hit because there was really no setup, but it's still a KO. As for this next opponent, I was definitely excited to see something different. It's Angela and Enchantress. Too strong as guardian women. It's interesting, but I don't know if it can beat Hammer Time. Once again, for our attack, we'll use the Brand Blood Hammer. And for that, we take Absorb Energy Damage. 
Apparently their Angela is at level 15, so they use Close the Gap, and they'll get two attacks in a row. They went with Ziphos, and a follow-up Ziphos. Great variety by the AI. And they take Absorb Energy for that hit. Okay, the Relentless Rapier is coming in as well, but with Absorb Energy, we actually end up back at full health. Remember that we learned not to waste bursts of speed? Well, here we are just starting with a Motion Granite. And by the way, just to make it clear, I know that Close the Gap gives a follow-up attack. But still, they could have started with something besides Ziphos. Or Ziphos, I guess. Either way, you know what I meant. Now, back to the fight at hand. It is our MVP's turn, and we're just going to use Call the Seas to begin. Did we miss out on an opportunity? Probably. But sometimes, for some reason, things just don't work correctly. Basically though, with the Tactician Power Nurkod, we should have used a single target attack first. And if we get really lucky, she'll use a Riptide, making Call the Seas a quick action. Now, Angela, the character with controversial ability pronunciations, is going to use her Battle Cry, then a Blades of Iker. See, that one will get her a follow-up with Xyphos. Yeah, we're going to pronounce it differently every time. Anyways, it was a good attack, but another rookie mistake, attacking Nurkod. So with her extra turn, we'll knock out the enemy agent, and then that's going to cause us once again to shift classes. We get an extra turn, probably because of tactician power, or a class change or something. And with that, we'll also knock out Angela. So, what we have left is Enchantress and a Skurn with Burst of Speed. This isn't going to go well for her. We begin with our level 1, then our Stomp. The only question is, how high will it crit? And it goes for 32,000 damage. Not a bad way to end a match. So, for our final victim, I mean opponent, we're facing Pestilence Beast and Enchantress. We had to have at least one of that team. Right away we get an objection. So that stops one missile, and then another one. So Enchantress doesn't get the fire at all. Unfortunately our agent gets affected by Cower. And then we're just going to go ahead and use our Brand Blood Hammer on the one. So I don't know if that's Neo from the Matrix or what. Well, actually, upon further review, we saw he was a tactician, so we went after Beast, but Skurn takes the hit. Alright, well, at least Beast doesn't do any damage, and he takes Absorb Energy. And now with Nurkod, we'll use a Breaching Strike, which we do get lucky and get a Riptide. And like I said, that makes Call the Seas a quick action. After that, we might as well attack with a Crashing Fury. And this almost takes the Horseman of Pestilence out. Um, well, that Riptide and follow-up attack actually do. So, that was because we became a Scrapper. And that also gave us yet another turn. So with that, we attack the enemy agent, get another Riptide, and our follow-up attack. So far, this is pretty brutal, I have to admit. Plus, remember the Brand Blood Hammer? Well, the Skeptic heals our agent because of that. So with our Burst of Speed, we'll first use a Hammering Blow on the enemy agent. This KOs him. In turn, that allows us to use a Stomp on Enchantress. And after doing nearly 28,000 damage, she is on her deathbed. I have to say, I actually feel kind of bad about this final battle. But it is Pestilence Beast and Enchantress, so... I don't feel that bad. And guess who's going to finish it off? That's going to be Nurkod, the Breaker of Oceans. So we'll go ahead and unleash a final Crashing Fury, and that's how this video is going to end. I really hope that you all enjoyed it. Make sure to tune in for more later. And lastly, I'd like to thank you all for watching, ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck and take care.